Hey, it's Allison from Computers.mom, and this video will show you how to backup your iPhone or iPad to a Mac running Catalina. Backups to a Mac used to be done with iTunes, but Apple eliminated iTunes on Macs in the fall of 2019 with the update to Catalina, so the backup process has changed. Apple has their own version of this video, which is excellent, but it's designed for people who are pretty tech savvy. Our approach is a little more detailed, and we will focus on the common problems people encounter in this process and how to solve them. Backing up to your computer creates a complete copy of the apps, settings, and data on your device. It's a great way to prepare for transferring all that info to a new iPhone or iPad, or to make sure you have secured all your data before you erase an older device. To get started, you'll need three things. An iPhone or iPad. I'm going to demonstrate with an iPad, but everything in this video applies to both, so I'll just use the word device to avoid confusion. Second, you'll need a Mac computer running Catalina. If you're not sure if you have Catalina, here's how to check. On your computer screen, just click on the Apple on the upper left-hand corner and then choose about this Mac. Your operating system is listed right here. If it says you're running Mojave or anything else, these directions are not going to work for you, and you might want to think about updating your Mac. While we're on this screen, let's click here to check the storage space to make sure there's enough room on the computer for the backup. You can see the available space right here. The third thing you need is the correct type of cable to connect your device to your computer. This step confuses a lot of people because the type of cable you need depends on which device and which computer you have. Here's how to tell. One end of the cable is going to plug into your iPhone or iPad. That end will either be a lightning connector that looks like this, or if you have one of the newer iPad Pros, it'll be a USB-C connector that looks like this. Technically, Apple's version of USB-C is called Thunderbolt 3, but for practical purposes, it's simpler to just call them all USB-C. The other end of the cable is going to plug into your computer. So if you have a newer Mac, you'll need that end to be USB-C. If you have an older Mac, the other end of the cable will be a rectangular connector like these, called USB-A. Notice the little trident symbol here? That tells you it's USB-A. Many people just call this type of connector USB. So where do you plug this cable in on the computer? Let's take a look at the back of an iMac and the side of an older MacBook. These holes where you plug the cables in are called ports, and the rectangular ones marked with that same trident symbol are USB-A ports. On a newer Mac, you may only have USB-C ports that look like a flattened loop like this. You can use any available port that the connector fits into. Once you have your equipment ready, Connect your device to your computer with the cable. Make sure the device is turned on and unlocked. Now go to the computer and open a Finder window by clicking on the little smiley guy down here in the dock. In the sidebar on the left, find Locations. If nothing shows up immediately below Locations, they may be hidden. Move your mouse pointer here next to the word Locations and click Show. Now you can see the device is connected to your Mac or on your network. If you still don't see your device, check that the cable's plugged in properly on both ends and that the device is unlocked. Now I can see that the device is connected, but the name is cut off. To see the whole name, point to the border between the sidebar and the main part of the finder window right here. When your mouse pointer becomes a double-headed arrow, click and drag to widen the sidebar so you can see the full name of the device. Now click on the device in the sidebar to select it. If this is the first time you are connecting this device to this computer, you'll see a prompt on the screen to trust the device. Click Trust, and then on your device, you'll also need to tap Trust and provide your passcode for security. Once you've allowed the devices to talk to each other, you'll see all kinds of information about your device in the main part of the Finder window right here. Let's make the window bigger so we can see a little better. There are two options in the Backup section. Backing up to iCloud is convenient, but backing up to the computer will be both faster and more complete than the iCloud backup, so select the second option. If there is sensitive data on your device like passwords or health information, you can click here to encrypt the local backup on the computer. Let's do that now. Enter a password for the backup and retype it to confirm. Be sure you remember this password. You can write it down or check this box to have your Mac remember the password in Keychain. When you're ready, click Backup Now. As the backup starts, you see its progress in the sidebar. First, the little whirly arrows as it's preparing, 
and then a circle fills in to show you how much of the backup is complete. It can take a few minutes. I'm speeding up this part. You'll know when it's done, when the circle disappears, and you see the date of the most recent backup right here. You can verify that the backup file was created by clicking Manage Backups right here. This backup file can then be used to set up a new device, or restore the current one if it's having some issues, or just for safety. In the description below this video, you will find links to other videos that show you how to erase a device you are no longer using, and also how to set up a new device from the backup you just created. Last step, very important. See the eject button right here? Don't forget to eject your device before you unplug it from the computer. Click the eject button and wait for the device to disappear from Finder before you physically unplug it. Here's a quick review of the steps. Plug your device into your Mac, open Finder and click on your device in the sidebar, choose Backup to this Mac, click Backup Now, and eject it when it's finished. That's all there is to it. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave comments and questions below. Click like if you found this helpful and be sure to subscribe for more Computers.mom videos.